Hey everybody, welcome back to Vegas Weekly for Saturday, July 24th, 2021. Today, we answer another question from our Facebook group. I review another personal favorite among strip resorts. We'll talk a little more about comps. And finally, we'll have some Vegas news, much of which uh, revolves around my next trip to Vegas. So we're going to talk about all of that today on Vegas Weekly. Okay, we're back. We're going to start our show today with our question of the week from the Facebook group. For one thing, it's a great opportunity for uh, those folks on the Facebook group that may not tune into the channel on a regular basis to catch what we're doing, and uh, we immediately engage them by talking to them about their questions. But before we do, very briefly, I have to mention a serious situation that is taking place within the group. We have received warnings from Facebook that uh, there have been altogether too many posts which have had to be removed because they violate Facebook's uh, rules. You know, um, And I, in many cases, I can't even see what the posts are. Um, but uh, let me just be really clear that if you are a person who's getting your posts uh, removed by Facebook, you're also probably going to get yourself removed from the group and blocked. And the reason for that is if we continue to have so many violations, uh, we may have to go to what's called post approval, which means a, a, a moderator has to approve basically every single post that comes up on the, on the group. And uh, frankly, it's been enough of a challenge just to try to keep up with all of the requests uh, to join the group. I did something like 140 of them last night. Um, it's impossible to screen everyone as well as we might wish we could. Um, and obviously people slip through that uh, whose purpose is to do little more than make trouble. Um, and some good natured kidding here and there is understandable. Um, and some people admittedly in the group can be a little too sensitive about things other people might say to them. Uh, you're on a public forum, so you should expect some of that, but nothing abusive or racist or sexist or anything that's going to basically get, uh, uh, the group in trouble. We got nearly 29,000 people and I would guesstimate there's probably only about 29 of them that are causing problems. Um, I removed, I believe three or four people this morning, um, for some of their posts. So don't do that. Okay. Keep the group open so uh, you can share your thoughts and, uh, and ask your questions. And one of the questions that was asked this week, and I got to check the name again, I'll probably still get it wrong, was from Charlene Pharisee, or I don't know. I'm hoping that that's close to pronunciation, Charlene. I will be posting a link to this uh, video as an answer to your question. But she was wondering how the Vidara Hotel, yeah, I'm not going to say in Casino because there isn't one, um, stands up compared to a lot of the other properties on the Strip. Is it a good place to stay? And my response is yes. Um, it is a very different kind of place to stay. It is not a place with a whole bunch of bars and restaurants. It has no casino, although you're very close to the Aria. And there's also an internal walkway that will take you over to Bellagio. Um, and you're right in the center of the Strip, so you're not far away from a casino, uh, but you don't have any, it's a completely non-smoking property, uh, if that's a consideration. The rooms in many cases feel a lot more like little apartments uh, because you get kitchenettes uh, with full-size refrigerators and you know cooking surfaces. Um, which can be a great thing, you know, for a family or anybody that might be staying for an extended period of time to try to save a little bit of money. Some of the rooms even have washers and dryers. Um, so it, it's a, the rooms are very comfortable. I've not personally stayed there, but I have very good friends that have stayed there on multiple occasions and give it nothing but high marks. Um, so I would say, Charlene, this is a good choice. Uh, it just depends, I guess, whether or not you feel like you need to be able to just literally uh, get off the elevator and uh, be in a casino. Uh, because if you do, you're not going to have that at Vidara. But otherwise, I think it's a great place to stay. Um, again, not a lot of food and beverage options on site, but you're very close to Aria and Cosmo and, like I said, Bellagio. And, and not far away from a number of the Caesars properties across the street and across the way. Um, so... 
pretty easy trip down to places like Park MGM, New York, New York. So you've got a lot of food options available to you, just not a whole lot on site. Uh, it's a smallish pool. It was known in the early days for having a death ray. Um, if anybody cares, we can talk about that sometime. But they, they, they fixed the death ray, so you will not uh, be boiled to death at the uh, pool. But a, fa a fairly nice pool. And like I said, it's, it's very different from a lot of the other properties. Um, it is an uh, MGM uh, resort, so it is tied into that. And uh, so you may have offers to uh, stay there based upon your play at other casinos. Like uh, Aria is kind of linked uh, as far as casino play is concerned there. So uh, both of them next to each other in the city center area. So hopefully, Charlene, that helped answer your question. I know a number of people uh, said similar things in the Facebook group and um, just wanted to throw my two cents in uh, with an enthusiastic thumbs up for Vidara. Okay, next up, it's time to talk about another strip resort. Okay. So, we just finished answering a question about Padara and enthusiastically recommending it as a property. Uh, I'm going to talk about another property in the same general neighborhood of the Strip that I particularly enjoy on a number of different levels, and that is Planet Hollywood. Um, opened up way back in the early 2000s as the Aladdin. It was not very successful, uh, got ultimately taken over by Caesars. Um, and the theme obviously went from this sort of Arabian Nights thing to, uh, well, Hollywood. Well, even that's pretty much gone at this point. Um, but uh, it, it's, it remains, I think, one of the uh, underrated properties on the Strip. Um, the rooms are not spectacular, but they're nice. Um, they're big bathrooms um, with a separate soaking tub. Um, and it may seem silly, but if you're a person that occasionally likes to uh, soak in the tub, it's, there's a decreasing number of properties on the Strip, at least in their sort of base rooms, that have a tub. And Planet Hollywood has a good-sized tub. Um, the resort rooms are bigger than the standard rooms, um, usually charge a bit more for those. Um, but you do get a bit more living space as well. Um, I like the property. The location is very good. Um, when it's operational, <laughs> the uh, the theater there is really nice. That's where I saw uh, Brittany and the Backstreet Boys. Don't judge me. I can see you do it. Don't judge me. Uh, but a good concert venue there. A number of sort of fun bars in the area. Uh, another thing I really like about Planet Hollywood is there's a lot of reasonably priced food options on site and nearby. Um, you've got... Uh, one of the more beloved sorts of uh, chain restaurants, I guess you'd say, in Las Vegas, uh, Earl of Sandwich is there. Uh, the Gordon Ramsay Burger, which always has a massive line. If you're a platinum or diamond or above Caesars player, make sure you cut the line because you'll save a lot of time. Um, there's a cafe there that's kind of a traditional coffee shop sort of place that's pretty good. And in the Miracle Mile shops next door, which is another one of these shopping malls in Las Vegas, but it's one where you can actually afford to buy some of the things that are on sale. But there are a number of restaurants there. Um, Ocean One is particularly famous for its $5 lunch specials. Um, but also Blondie's, La, La Salsa Cantina, the PBR Rock Bar, all three of those restaurants have really good breakfast specials that you can take advantage of, and usually some kind of, again, specials throughout the day. And these are sit-down restaurants where people bring you food. Um, so it, it's a really good spot if you're looking to uh, have a number of cheap eat options or inexpensive food options um, nearby. Um, in some properties, I mean, I love Aria, but I don't know that, that there's two or three places I could eat there <laughs> that wouldn't feel like I was breaking the bank. Um, same thing, as I mentioned about the win last week. Um, the pool is not a particularly impressive one. So if that's a big consideration for you, you may want to take that into account. Um, they have had a number of shows there over the years. I think the only one that's sort of operational at the moment is the uh, Chris Angel, um, who gets mixed reviews. Um, <laughs> I, I may have insulted uh, Chris in an earlier program, and I had a number of folks jump to his defense and said that they enjoyed his uh, show. So 
Um, so there usually are shows on site, although Caesars has cut down on some of their sort of B or C level shows recently, so your mileage may vary there. I've also always enjoyed the casino. It just seems like a fun, sort of active place. There's a lot of people, sort of, a lot of good people watching, people wandering around. Um, again, it doesn't feel kind of super upscale like you get sometimes at, say, Cosmo. Uh, and at the same time, it doesn't feel so sort of down scale like you might get at a place like Flamingo or Excalibur. So I just kind of like the mix of people. Uh, they have a really uh, nice little bank of uh, video kino machines that I have on many occasions camped out at for uh, uh, quite a number of hours on occasion. So um, that's fun. But th they have a good selection of games. They did recently get rid of their poker room. So if that was a consideration, uh, then it's probably not going to be a great choice for you. And it's just a really good location. You're right there next to Paris, um, Bally's and just across the street from the whole city center area. So there's a lot to do around there. And uh, hey, they even have a Chick-fil-A now. So there you go. All right, so that's my resort of the week, Planet Hollywood. Uh, if you've never tried it out, check it out someday. They usually have pretty decent rates. Next up, how to get a room without paying those rates. Okay, everybody, so we've been talking a lot about comps for the last several weeks on the program. We may sort of wrap that up, at least for now, although we can certainly return to the subject, particularly if any of you have any additional questions. If you do, please feel free to leave them in the show notes below, and we can address those in an upcoming episode. For the average Vegas visitor, the comp, the most desirable comp, is going to be a room. Um, outside of the expense of traveling to and from Las Vegas, since most people will fly. Um, the hotel is, at the very least, uh, uh, the second biggest expense they face. And in many cases, it may be the most expensive uh, part of the trip, particularly if they li live nearby or able to drive. So getting a room for free, though it's never really free, is obviously a big bonus. And the thing, only thing I would mention here, and it goes back to what we've talked about in recent weeks with uh, Average Daily Theoretical, how much you're gambling, etc., is to be realistic about uh, the kind of rooms you're going to get. For the average sort of low roller, you can frequently still get at least midweek very low priced or free rooms at places like Harrah's, the Flamingo, uh, Bally's, um, the Rio, though that's kind of off the strip, so I don't know that I want to encourage that one, um, through the Caesars Rewards program. And very frequently you can get good room offers at places like Excalibur, Luxor, um, maybe even New York, New York. So, um, those may not be the top of the line properties. They're not for either of the uh, uh, companies. But they are rooms that uh, are typically available to most gamblers who play at least a decent amount uh, in the casinos. And you might get two, three, or four nights for free. There may even be some, uh, you know, some free play or free food. That's more common, I would say, with uh, M Life, the MGM properties. Uh, but um, I think you probably tend to get even better room offers um, from the Caesars properties and those on the lower end. Um, you know, I've said this, uh, I was just talking to a friend of mine last week about Las Vegas and room nightmares and so forth. And, and certainly if you read through TripAdvisor or other hotel uh, review sites, uh, you get a very mixed uh, bag on most of the properties that I mentioned. Um, I think probably Bally's does about as well as any in terms of not having a lot of negative reviews. But even there, there's going to be people that don't like it. Um, these are all older properties. Um, the rooms, in some cases, are older as well. If you get a base room at some of these properties, they have not necessarily been remodeled in quite a number of years. So there are likely to be some scuff marks along, maybe some uh, things that don't that look a little bit uh, broken or damaged. Um, and uh, inevitably, uh, there's the room with the view of the air conditioning vent. And uh, maybe that doesn't look like it's been scrubbed down quite as much as you would like. 
Um, but I do find typically that a lot of the people that have expressed dissatisfaction with some of these lower end properties uh, are folks that didn't necessarily book through the um, hotel directly or the Players Club and maybe book through a third party site. I continue to believe that uh, uh, if you're booking through the hotel or the Players Club that you're going to get a better room than somebody that gets it through Priceline or some you know other third party site. So keep that in mind. So those are some realistic spots. Obviously, if you play downtown and you um, you also have an opportunity, perhaps, uh, I know El Cortez has generally been pretty good with room offers for me. Plaza is pretty good. Um, until very recently, the, um, the Stevens properties downtown were pretty good as far as Golden Gate and the D. Uh, but uh, a lot of us have seen those offers decline quite a bit since the, re -up, since the opening of Circa. And also, typically, uh, the Boyd properties downtown, Main Street, uh, Fremont, and Cacao, have usually been pretty good at about uh, room offers right now. Uh, the uh, Main Street station is still closed, um, and the Fremont is uh, kind of fallen on hard times. So, you know, if you want to stay downtown, those are maybe some options there. But again, uh, be realistic about the room category that you're going to get. Um, concentrate your play, as we've talked about in the past. And uh, you may have an opportunity to stay at a nice property, maybe a nicer property than you expected on your next trip to Vegas. Speaking of trips to Vegas, in our final segment, I'm going to talk about my trip coming up in September and uh, a couple other Vegas news notes. Okay, so to wrap up today's show, I did want to let my viewers know that um, I will be in Las Vegas um, in early September. Um, I will be there for my birthday, which is uh, September the 6th. Um, heading up there Labor Day weekend and uh, returning on September the 8th. Um, got an incredible deal to stay at the Aria on Friday and Saturday nights through the My Vegas app. Um, it was free for some reason. Um, <laughs> and the room value was something like $680, which I can believe. This is Labor Day weekend, so it should be a very busy time in Las Vegas, and also we'll be spending a couple of nights at uh, the Encore um, on a deal that uh, they sent me um, a while back, and um, looking forward to staying there. Um, stayed at the Wynn several times, so I think the uh, the rooms at Encore uh, have kind of a different feel, and I kind of like it from what I've seen, so i um, excited to be doing that. Um, there will be some other folks in town around the same time. So there will be some meetups and activities. Um, one of the reasons that I, I chose to go ahead and uh, visit the September, um, the, other than the fact that it's my birthday, and I hadn't been there on my birthday in, I think, five years. So I thought that would be fun. And also, I kind of uh, wanted a little more of a laid-back trip. Uh, in recent uh, years, uh, I've been... Uh, I've gotten a little hectic on a few occasions. Certainly last year's uh, uh, Rocktober event was hectic. Um, sounds like it's going to be even bigger this year. And for me, anyway, bigger isn't necessarily better. Um, I found I had a, a kind of a more relaxed uh, time when I was there in February. Um, even though I did do some meetups with some people and hung out. You know, it was more sort of small groups. So uh, I'm not doing anything uh, directly in terms of hosting any kind of events or anything. Uh, there are folks that are gonna be out there at the same time. Um, and uh, so if you're not gonna be out there during that time frame, uh, do uh, feel, free, feel free to hit me up or something. We can definitely uh, meet up, say hello, have a drink. But there won't be any sort of big time uh, events going on. Hopefully there will be a Vegas going on. Um, the sort of news in Las Vegas this week continues to be sort of uh, concerning. Uh, in terms of the COVID-19 situation. Um, a number of uh, casino properties are requiring their uh, employees to wear masks again, although it's not been required of guests at this point. Um, so uh, who knows? And there are, in fact, uh, continuing travel restrictions in place from uh, overseas. And in addition, uh, there are various U.S. states that appear to be quite concerned about uh, travel to and from Las Vegas 
and are definitely not encouraging their residents to go there. So um, I'm hearing some optimistic uh, news. I, I, I'm starting to see that there is a little more of a surge in uh, people getting vaccinated, which I think is going to help uh, reduce some of this uh, um, sort of surge, surge four, whatever surge we're on right now. So I'm hopeful that that will be the case. But uh, but like I said, I did want to let you all know that I will be in Las Vegas in early September. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, um, looking forward possibly to seeing some of you all there as well. Uh, we're going to wrap up today's show. I uh, hope that it provided some useful information for you. Uh, we do this once a week, more or less. And uh, we'll do our Wednesday show this week. We may do it live. Uh, so uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that notification bell. That way you'll find out uh, anytime that we have a new uh, program or if we're going to do an upcoming live stream or something like that, you'll, you'll get notified about that. So if you like. All right, so we're going to wrap it up for today. Thanks so much for watching. Hope that you have a great, lucky, and healthy week, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.